Huh. Enough! I've had my fill of... What's this? Hey, buddy. What? Who are you? The Iron Flail Commander is a younger man, lean in build. His brown hair is unkempt and eyes fevered. As his feet is a great set of what appears to be a pit. You hear a smattering of anxious cries rising from the cell as the commander steps forward. He glares down through the grate, at his face a mask of rage. Your scheming friends. Not a scrap of honor in the lot of you. You must be the commander. Yes. And you're the one who's been skulking around my camp. At Eric's words, Dianus' throat, his expression frozen mid-snarl. It isn't clear what happened, not until you start to feel it too. Unbidden, your senses drift as if you'd reached out toward a source of essence. You feel an ache in your chest, an almost painful sensation of being pulled forward. A sudden wave of memories floods your mind, clear as the day they formed. You see Edema's campsite, ravaged by the Beavac. The halls of Cadnoa, in the caverns deep beneath the keep, the stone around you bellows warnings in a dead language. Deeper still, a fangmoor parts like a wound in the world. The images wash over you, tracing lives and emotions from a hundred different times and places. Not all your own. Slowly, you become aware of the sensation of being watched. Reach out. You, you direct your senses, tracing the invasion to its source. A Dirac. Conviction burns through him, right as a brazier. Through... It was a brazier, not brazier. Jeez. For an instant, you share in his emotion, and a sourceless desperation rattles around your skull. Absent context, the fragments of memories you see are just images. A small house across a field of vibrant purple flowers. A sea of armoured kith and flapping banners waiting on your command. There's an uncomfortable moment where you feel your twinned awareness turning in on itself. Then the connection is severed. Adiric looks startled. Ah, oh, you're a watcher. You hear a few scattered murmurs from the gathered soldiers. That's not... Adiric glances around the room, his face coloring. That's not known to many. Not past these walls. Why have you come? Why now? You can see lost souls like I do? I see and hear spirits, it's true. It took many years to understand. I take it watchers don't enjoy the best reputation in Rid Karas. Does everyone in the Deerwood boast of their afflictions? You're ashamed. Why? It's hardly something to be proud of. Look to your own sins, Watcher. I'll not share mine. I often... I don't often read living memory so clearly. That felt like a cipher reading. I wouldn't know. Perhaps we simply worsen each other's condition. The prospect seems to trouble him. What? What is it? I thought all, other, all the other Watchers were mad. That wouldn't bode well for you, would it? And Derek's tone is irritable, but he watches you with wary interest. I have a firm grip on my senses, whatever you believe. The Watcher's curse is many things, but if it promised madness, I would not have taken command of the Iron Flail. The memories I saw, some of them couldn't have belonged to you. You're awakened, aren't you? Are you also awakened? No, of course not. Do you know of a cure? Derek stares at you. Eventually, he gives a slight shake of it his seems head. It's a terrible thing to be awakened and a watcher both. I'm sorry. Enough about yes, that. Yes, we were in the middle of something, I believe. I aim to find out what happened to the delegates. All this for them? Infiltrating my fort, skulking through the camp. What kind of reaction did you expect? You held them captive without notice. They'd like to paint us as the unreasonable ones back in Stalwart, wouldn't they? I never planned this. It wasn't my intention. We wanted to negotiate. Stalwart sent delegates to discuss terms of peace. I offered them the opportunity. I was generous. The Derek paces a few steps before he gets a hold of himself. But Stalwart sent soothsayers, not diplomats, to frighten us with stories of the moon going dark, the earth shaking. I would speak to the people who have seen these wild visions to compare notes. But there have been tremors. There are cave-ins at the mine. Don't! Don't play the fool with me! These omens are meant to frighten me, to make me doubt my purpose here. But there is more at stake here than a village in the mountains. They dismiss my faith, call us superstitious. But what does Stalwart believe in? Iron and gold, and nothing else. I have tilled barren fields with my bare hands. What is gold to me? What do you want with Stalwart, anyway? With a village of fishermen? Nothing. But they cling fiercely to the forge you gave them. Mm -hmm. Some of the men are here for gold and good steel. And I promise them their share. 
but I came for cannons. With the battery's cannons, we can hold the pass. Rayad Saris has suffered enough. Its sons and daughters have nothing. We cannot sit and wait for an attack from the Deerwood. There is an army coming. I've seen it. Pouring down from the mountain. It will crush Stalwart and come for Rayad There we go. Saris. That's the thing we were thinking of. The Iron Flail will be the wall that safeguards my homeland. From the worst these fire worshippers can bring to bear. Between the Duke's assassination and the Hollowbone Crisis, dear, it's a little preoccupied. So I believed. Hoped, maybe. But that only means they're angry. They'll look for someone to blame, an enemy to fight. You... Dar Darian mentioned you had a vision. Let the fools at Stalwart mock me all they wish. I know what I saw. If they had seen the same, they'd understand. I warn you, if you think to taunt me, Watcher... I had a vision too. In mine I saw Cadnua reduced to rubble by an army that shook the earth. Doubt creases Derek's brow. His men exchange looks, waiting tensely for orders. Why would they turn on their own? No. You're trying to trick me. This is all another distraction. All that destruction we saw. You really think a bunch of backwater fools can do all that? If they were to come together, perhaps. If they built another of Magran's devices. I remember thunder and a hundred eyes gazing back at me. Any of that sound familiar? The thunder followed me to the temple at dawn's reach, and the earth split beneath our feet. I thought the Iron Flail might be the army in my own vision. Perhaps we both made Why a mistake. Why should I believe any of this? You would say anything at all to protect Stalwart. Think. What if you're wrong? You're losing men and resources to fight people who aren't your enemies. And if I'm not... If this is just a watcher's madness and I'm leading my people astray? We both know something's coming. Maybe two watchers can figure out how to stop it. For several moments, there's nothing but silence in the cabin. Then you hear the scrape of metal as Adiric takes up his sword, only to lay it flat across his palms. I led my people here because I believed we were on the right path. I bound my soul to this blade as proof of my surety. There's a ripple of soul energy in the air, and there, there and gone, Adiric looks pain. The sword's no good to me now. It's yours, for as long as you can wield it. I'll call in our forces from the mountains. Please, give me time to explain. You should speak with Stalwart's messengers. Uh -huh. Perhaps you'll get some answers out of them. I was thinking this was t going a bit too fast. Sever the soul, you say? So firstly, what's his sword? Steadfast, soulbound, one-handed sword. Anyone can use it, basically. I think that's of every class. I'm not sure. Um, okay. Plus five will, plus one resolve. Yeah, sure. Single-edged backsword. I could try that. I could give it to Maneha. Um, Alright, let's see. What we'll do. We'll stick it on me for the moment. And bind it and see what the first step is. Kill them with crits. That seems like a thing I can do. And that said, I, the resolve isn't going to do anything because I've got other things boosting my resolve, right? Um, but also, what's Sever the Soul going to do for me? Interrupt. Okay. Just weakens their defenses and does damage. Cool, cool. And, um, yeah, so if I go to Steadfast on here? No. Yeah, okay, good. That makes sense. All right, whatever. I'm so here. many soulbound things. I will take your things because I want them. That uh, sounds right to me. Alrighty. Sure thing. Thing to boost mechanics. Need to remember I can do that. Girdle of the Driving Wave gives you a knockdown once per encounter. Sure. A club. Why not? A book. Saints War. Potion of Major Regeneration. And lockpicks and camping equipment. Alright, unlock the key and have a chat with the people that were down there. Oh, oh, thank you. Thought we'd never get out of there. Are you hurt? No, just a little bruise, perhaps. A cold was the worst part. I don't know how you managed to talk that man down. He was practically foaming at the mouth. 
and now he and his men are still skulking around the mountains. I'm not sure letting him live was the best idea. The commander wasn't the problem. One of the delegates points an accusing finger at another woman, standing apart from the rest. We might have come to terms if she hadn't goaded him, marching, shouting at him about omens and curses, demanding he leave the march. You know how superstitious the Red Karens are. Commander went white as a sheet. She sabotaged the meeting. Can you... Who are you? With a desperate speed, the woman suddenly lunges sidelong toward a nearby rack and seizes a dagger there. She sets a blade to her own throat. Okay. And now we're going to have to talk to your soul. Fine. Unseen to all but yourself, the dying one's soul essence coils in a thin wisp about her body, and the grows brighter as her corpse stills. Everyone else is horrified. Manaha kneels by the dying woman and inspects her robes. She examines the crescent medallion hanging around the woman's neck. What, what just happened? Damn it, now we'll never get an answer from her. Did they pull your names out of a hat when they put this delegation together? We all volunteered. She seemed perfectly normal. A little intense, maybe. We reach out and brace against the sudden flare of pain and fear digging after the less recent events. There is a copper taste in your mouth and pain like fire in your throat. Under the brute terror of death, you find a comforting thread of resolve and of satisfaction in duty fulfilled. You follow it. It leads you, stumbling into another mem memory, uh, as whole and vivid as the first. You walk the dark halls of an abbey, dimly lit and quiet, your footsteps loud, a blur and you recognize, uh, and you're standing in a dimly lit room, facing a, woman, a robed amour. You recognize him as Kaoto, the high abbot. He beckons you forward. Examine your surroundings. You're in a wide, rounded chamber. The tiles beneath you are covered in strange curling symbols. You recognize them as symbols of Andra, goddess of sea and memory. The memory blurs, and when your sight is clear, you're standing in front of Kaoto, and his, he is smiling gently down at you. Drive the raid series from these mountains, and you may yet spare many lives. The Tidebringer will be here in a week's time. Should you be delayed in your travels, report to him as you would to me. He will enter the reliquary and call off the army of Ilus in my stead. If you are caught, sister, you know what you must do. I will pray for your return, but we will take comfort in the knowledge that you have joined the rest of Andra's favorite in her keeping. Wow. Is the name Ilus familiar to anyone? Did Ilus start a figure of speech for when you can't remember it? Some it must be the Ilus that took it from me. Yes, yes, but there's a story to it. They're supposed to do the bidding of the Lady of Lament. Andra points and they come. Out of nowhere, white things from the face of the world. That's why whenever something goes up or missing, goes missing or gets destroyed with no one there to see it, you're supposed to thank Andra that the Eyeless didn't come for you too. Do you know Kawoto? Ah, uh, yes, he came through town some time back. Stopped in the Temple of Starwood just after the town decided to rededicate it to Abaddon. He didn't seem too pleased about that, dressed like a priest. Maybe he took offense. He isn't... Umur, a tall fellow, very polite, considering he's apparently the leader of some fanatical sect. I think it's clear we haven't been the best judges of character recently. Any of you knew, know what a Tidebringer is? Tidebringer? I think that's something they used to talk about at the Temple of Andra. It's a person, a title. It tends to be used in more uh, devout circles. And Eilis, we already had that, yep. Do you know anything about an abbey to the north? I heard of some place like that, an Andrite stronghold, not the kind that welcomes visitors. It sounds like the Abbey of the Fallen Moon. Is that where she came from? Yes, and I'll find the reliquary. Um, apparently she didn't make it back to call off whatever attack they're planning. What? Another one? Gods, it feels like everyone on Aurora is after the battery now. What do these Andrides want? The uh, Why would they want the Red Karens out? Doubt it's for the Stalwart's benefit. Competition, maybe? I'd better go ask them. If you do mean to go to this Abbey, be careful. There have been stories about traitors wandering north and getting scared off, or even killed by strange guards. That's the place, alright. They're a secret a bunch. Otherwise, I suppose you could try and sneak in. I doubt you'll be welcome otherwise. Maybe I can convince them I'm the one that's, that they've been waiting for. I hope so. I imagine the Abbey is heavily guarded. A sudden deafening crash from outside makes the delegates jump, startled. A rumble like thunder follows. You hear further sounds of smashing timbers, panic screams. Stay put. I'll take care of it. Yes, we'll, we'll wait here in, inside. Okay, first thing. Grab the last bit. Alright, no. We already did that. Cool. First thing, rest for eight hours. Probably not. Okay. I'm guessing the Eyeless are attacking. They've been held for a week. She was meant to get back within a week. 
And we saw the eyelash, be eyelash being forged. That is a big fella. A bunch of big fellas. Well, well. Eyeless hammer. Okay. Oh, are those things here for us or the iron? Can you try knocking this fella? Yes. Good. Okay. Now, where am I? Here. Here. Um, change weapon. You are not Thank immune you. to being stunned. Why are you taking so long to do this? Good. One point eight seconds. That. Hobble it. Come on, one more. And again. And again. And again. And again. Good. I'm here. Okay. As the last mage fall di falls, a tide of essence sweeps through the ether. It washes over you and you find yourself in the memories of the eyeless. The hulking creatures surround you, their sinew wrapped skeletons clanking and screeching in the semi-darkness. Their bodies fill the air with the tang of metal and musk of sweat. The cavern in which you stand, it looks like a cavern anyway, it glows with the dim ambient light. Steel flashes as the eyeless stir and shift. They stamp their feet and groan in rasping metallic voices. Their restless energy prickles at the back of your neck and something in the echoing rumble you hear. It's familiar. It's a pounding noise from your dream, the harbinger of a terrible army. You begin to wonder how many eyeless are crowded around you. You suspect there must be scores of them, maybe more. It's difficult to tell how far back this chamber goes or where it is. Ahead you see a glint of light. It might be an exit. However, the vision is already starting to fade. You push past the lumbering eyeless and cling to the wilting shreds of the vision. The light up ahead is blinding after the dark of the cave. You rush toward it even as it fades into a pale blur. You can't see where you are, but you hear a cold wind whistling through the gap and feel a spray of moisture sting your cheeks. The vision ends and you return to the frozen and blood churned mud at the fort. Wow, that's a really short exploration on that quest. Adiric appears to have taken some blows. There's purpling bruise along his temple, and his armor is dented in several places. He looks rather Those dazed. Things, they, they came from all sides. The delegate. No, you were right. The visions are true. Adiric looks you over. You fought well. And I'm glad to see you've come through in one piece. Not many of my men were so lucky. I'll take what's left of our forces. Those that will follow me further up the mountain. We should be prepared if. When those monsters return, we can defeat them if we work I have together. I've seen already that there is little you can't accomplish. He bows his head and turns to the road. Okay, cool, cool. These abominations stink of a god's cowardice. Grieving mom, go for it. Uh huh. Yeah. All right, that was fun. Um, I guess we'll explore the camp. Since everyone's dead, we can at least, you know, do a bit of looting. And then leave. Take the stuff. Also get the XP for exploration and chat with Manaha after we're done with that. Seems like a fun time. Yep, there's a beer. Okay, alright, fast mode. There's some Let's other bits. In here. Just As pick a lock. Promised. Youthful spirits. Fine. Bunch of junk, really. So, I kind of wish that the game would have done something interesting. Like, if you had avoided killing any or many guards, then. Um, 
the eyeless would be fought off more easily. A letter home. Huh. Basically, like, hey, I miss you. Got something over here. Give. Okay. What's that? Disassembled trebuchet, yeah. I'd say they brought siege weapons. Ring of searing fl ah, and busting wounds. Yeah. This. Hey, a war pup. Okay, okay. Well. I mean, we have a cat, and the cat is very cute. Um, and we had a dragon for a good long time, but let's let's have a puppy for the moment. Ah, uh, where's our pet slot? There it is. Oh, look at that little fella. There he is. Wonder if he'll make little dog noises. Okay, and this binding copper and vessel flesh. Okay, so yeah, that is. So, what you do is you take a magically prepared corpse, then you cover it in iron and binding copper, and then you you know enchant it and turn it into a murdering machine. Okay, Manaha, let's chat with you. Who's after us? But I would have preferred a card. Okay, that seems like... Um, I guess we should be flattered that someone sent those things after us. But I would have preferred a card. She wipes a slick of gold from her neck, sniffs at her bloodstreak hand, and shrugs. That name was a metaphor. Um, okay. I think you're missing the first half of these lines. Okay. To doom, if anyone had yeah. asked me. Okay, I think we're going to need to save and reload at some point. What it cost them the Mace Hands of Doom, if anyone had asked me. Not con been dreaming non about, huh? It's a wonder you're getting any sleep. This is, so, this is the voice acting does not work when you just give me half the line. Um, yeah. That's what we're going to do. No, Regretting all my decision making up to this point. And a suicidal plan's better than none. Don't be happy, you've been looking for the Abbey a long I time. No, it's just. Uh, <sighs> She grumbles this with memory, exasperation. It, it feels like it's crowding my head that much more. Okay. Driven me halfway across the known world. Sounds like an unhealthy relationship. But without makeup sex. <sighs> it's time I told you what I did. Very well. Dear in unification. Oh, God. Yeah, it was war centuries ago, before Adiran unification. She holds a hand in front of us. Came across the northern forests to subdue some of the outlying Kalkland villages. I was a soldier then, Brutal led a work. campaign across the northern forests to subdue some of the outlying Kalkland villages. Brutal work. Go on. And another third to the elven scouts hiding in it. By the time we reached the first village, we'd crushed their defenses, and they'd bled us. Lost a third of my forces to the forest. Is the bit that's missing there? But they spit on us when we marched into town. Okay. Lodging in the old meeting hall. And when the sun set, they tried to burn it down. Wow, us. that's a good trick. The point. They betrayed you after surrendering. That seems serious to and me. Would that I'd had your principles. Or of pointless, bloody battle as we fought for the rest of the region. I had, had to, to break them. Uh -huh. And I had to send a message to the rest of the villages. A handshake as she raises them to cover her face. These around the town and left them there to die. Wow. What happened then? I never remembered more. The gentlefolk forgave each other for what they'd done to each other's people. Um. Wow. You killed those Villages to prevent more fighting? That's what I kept telling the troops. I wanted to see pain. And I wanted to be the one holding a blade. That's terrible. Don't I know it? Anyway, we should get going. She shoulders her pack and you catch a glimpse of something unusual in it. A thick roll of cloth bound by leather. Something I've been saving for better days. Okay. Alright. That was interesting. So... What I'm going to do now, because I've started seeing that bug, um, is I'll probably save and relaunch the game. And what are we going to do? Alright, we need to go to this abbey. Alright, so there's the fort. Ah, uh, there's your abbey. That's the thing that we hadn't seen. Okay. So the thing is, what else do we have? Um, 
Do we have any other things to do here? Rising Tide and Forgotten Army are basically the same thing, right? Um, and yeah, so then Servant of Death, Burden of Memory. So Siege of Crow Cult is the other major thing that we've got. So I guess, Tell yeah. Me. What we'll do is we'll go to the Abbey and then uh, we'll do that. And I suspect that's where the majority of the campaign of this expansion is going to be. But I still haven't figured out where the Searing Falls is for the bounty. I'm assuming it's similar. Uh, what I am going to do, though, is I'm going to stop here for now. I'm going to have a, like, 15-minute break. And uh, I'll be back at about 4 o'clock. So, uh, for reference, it's currently, you know, 12 to 4. So, I'll see you then. Bye.